Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Stock Market Update Show. And this is where we do all the analysis on what would be the best possible scenario where the market is heading. So we have been playing bullishness for the past couple of weeks because we just got to keep on following the trend. So I'll be doing analysis for you guys on QQQ, S&P 500, NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta. So because we want to look at the seven mega cap tech stocks to give us a better understanding of where QQQ will likely be continuing to head and where QQQ continues to go up. Obviously, SPY will keep on being dragged up by QQQ. So before we get into the technicals of the charts, let's take a look at some of the data. So we have bank earnings tomorrow in a list of them. So they will kick off the earnings and they have also a couple of banks earnings into next week as well. And earnings um, are actually estimates from analysts are saying that we are likely getting a 7% decline uh, this quarter three. Just as last quarter, we had estimate of decline as well, but it came in better than expected. So it only declined less than what it was expected to be declined. So if we this quarter, let's say we just get a decline of 4% for this quarter, then the market probably can still go sideways and up if that is the case. So we'll see when earnings start to roll in. And you can see today we have money rotation in the market again. So I've continued to talk about this. Money keeps on rotating in the market. If it continues, bears aren't going anywhere because if sectors of, for example, today, XLV, the healthcare sector is red, money is going into the tech sector today and vice versa. When you sometimes see the tech sector being red, you can see the healthcare, the financial sector and every other sector being green. That just means money continues to rotate in the market, meaning no fear in the market. You can see the SMH, the semiconductor sector today right here, is also um, leading tech as well. So you can see NVIDIA is hitting all-time highs. So if that's happening, um, there is no fear in the market. And we don't want to be shorting because of um, just because it's overvalued, right? That's the last thing we want to do. And you can see after today's CPI data and yesterday's good CPI data, these second rate hike um, probability has um, dropped quite dramatically. At one point, this was close to almost in the 30s for the second rate hike, and now it's in the 19s. So the second rate hike is likely not happening now anymore, but obviously we still have two more datas before um, November, actually three more datas before November. So anything could change. And so now we only have one rate hike priced in in end of month, July 26. And AAI sentiment data came in today again. So usually we get this on Thursdays. And it's still in the 40s. So market is still very bullish. And uh, as long as market stays sideways and then up, every time it goes up, it forms a higher pivot. It's going to continue to go up. So I'll show you guys the uh, what's the very first thing we want to look for if you're a bear. But at the moment, we don't have any of that yet. So let's start to take a look. So I've been talking about this a lot where um, if you're a bear, you want to see an hourly downtrend as the very, very, very first step for the bears to even have any control. So as long as we don't get any of that, um, we're not going to get any significant drop because significant drop would be mean, meaning the drop would be big enough where um, on the daily chart, if we have a big enough drop on the daily chart, we're likely having an hourly downtrend already. So we zoom into the hourly time frame, right? One hour. We look for something like this. So let's say, let's see here. Something like over here. Let's say initial move, bounce, drop. But this hourly downtrend was lacking follow through because um, you can see right there, that was the break and bulls just bought it all up. And essentially that just means that there isn't a lot of bearish um, bears going on in the market. So we pretty much just bounce off of support and then we just keep on going back up. You can see because this support right here was the prior resistance. So that means uh, when we price is above, prior resistance is going to act as support when price is coming down to it. Let's see if the bears can follow through and break that, then I, that would start shaping up a um, different scenario. I would, start, or I would start being scouting shorts on the next bounce. But bulls continue to buy dips, and we just keep on going up. After we broke out yesterday, I was talking about that um, every trend is in favor of the bulls. So we're very likely going to continue. So if your monthly 
weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, five minute time. Even the five minute time train is in favor of the bulls. Guess where we're going to going? We're probably going to keep on heading higher. And unless um, I see some hourly downtrends with some bear volume coming in, I will likely be scouting um, bull trades even in my day trades because um, why would I try to short the top? Um, I may get lucky and nail the top. Let's say today right here, this is the top, right? And I'm short and I got lucky and this is it. What are the chances of that? Let's say I've been trying for short for the past five months and I thought this was the top. I was like, yes, you know, make some money here. This is going to be the top. The market's going to tank. Next thing you know, we go higher. I say I shorted here as well, right? And it dropped. And I was like, man, I think I nailed the top again. And next thing you know, we are higher, right? If you continue to try to, to nail the top, it's going to be a headache because markets are currently in uptrend, in every trend. So unless you're like a short term day trade short and then you're just shorting it for the day and then you take profit, that's perfectly fine. That, um, that's a very good trade. If you're trying to nail a short swing trade where you're holding your short and just by just because um, the macro is bad, then that is not the um, way to go because macro and stock market is separate. Obviously, we want to have the macro in the back of our head knowing what's coming up um, in the future, but we don't want to trade the charts based on um, those macro emotions. So as long as we stick to the charts, um, we're good to go. So same thing. So right now, Kiku is a bit extended again in the shorter time frame, and so we'll likely get some consolidation soon. Consolidation just means, you know, pullback or going sideways before the next move. So probably tighten up, or or you can see like a tiny range where we talk about tiny ranges before it breaks out, just like when Nvidia did, and we'll see. As of now, let's take a look at. Um, what resistance are ahead above us for QQQ? So zoom into the zoom out into the daily time frame. You're pretty much now testing the all-time high structure, which is this structure right here. You can see now QQQ is trading right in the low range of that structure. It coincides exactly right there. So if we do break above that, I'm looking at the high of this structure over here. And if we do break that, then we're probably looking back up here at this 388 zone. Um, to the bottom of this structure as well. Pretty much close right at this 379 zone. So it'll be bottom of this first structure. So yeah, if you get some resistance before we hit the next um, zone. Three day, one, two gap, two day gaps. We get another gap up tomorrow like that, then that could be a potential good short, as in like a day trade short. Because um, chances of you nailing the short on three day gap ups, let's say gaps up like 2% tomorrow, or three, even, or probably not three, but let's say we got 2% tomorrow, and and then you, you play like, for example, let me show you guys, let's say you go to the one hour. So let's say we open in the pre-market, so you know you can see the price chart in the pre-market. Let's say we open up here at pre-market. Pre-market high hits here, and we consolidate a little bit. Then market opens right here, right? And it bounces. Market bounces in the open. You can short right there, playing off of the pre-market highs. So whatever the pre-market high is, and let's say we gap up um, how many percentage is this? We say we gap up two point three percent. And, and that was the pre-market high and market opens, it dips a little bit and bounces and you can try to short a double top and just set your stop loss right above the pre-market high, whatever that pre-market high is. So your risk is very little, if you're wrong, so whatever, if you're right and you get a decent short, we can potentially come back to this uh, 375 zone and get your profit because um, it's a bet for you there is to um, hold your short for longer. but. Uh, you can hold your shirt for longer, but just make sure to lock down your stop losses. So when it bounces, you still get stopped out with a profit. All right, let's take a look at SPY. So SPY 450 is very clear resistance. 
It's a psychological resistance as well as is testing the low, the same structure, same as QQQ, is in that low of this structure. So they both have the same resistance, and we'll see if we can get over. We can get over that. So why is heading to four, five, four, and whether it gets over that or not is probably going to be dictating by tomorrow's earnings because XLF, which is the financial sector, is um, a decent weighting in SPY. So if um, banks gets good earnings tomorrow, the financial sector may be green. And then if also the tax sector is green, then SPY would be having a decent day. So we'll see in the morning when those earnings roll in. And as of now, same thing, hourly time frame chart is your guide. No hourly downtrend, no bears, because that's like the shortest time frame I want to see. Very first step, the bears even show up. If not, I'm not going to be playing against the trend, and especially with indexes, because indexes are designed to go up in the long run for um, the market. So we don't want to be um, fighting against our chances, right? If you have a 70% chance, market is going to go up, and a 30% chance, market is going to go down. Which one would you rather be playing? Uh, obviously, we want to be playing uh, the seventy percent chance, which is in our favor. Um, I'm not saying like, let's say we have a huge recession um, in quarter four, like December of this year, or maybe early next year, February or something. We're gonna be crash, right? But that's okay. We'll be we'll be trading short when that happens, right? But as of now, we're taking advantage of the bull move, and when the time to short comes. We'll all will be shorting the market, taking advantage of both sides. So as long as we just trade whatever the chart tells us. So let's say um, end of the year, we start to see hourly downtrends confirming, daily downtrends confirming, four-hour downtrends confirming. Then we switch to short. We, we make money on the downside. We make money on both sides. So continue to stick to the chart and don't let your emotions um, play into your trades. All right, let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, uh, yesterday, after yesterday's breakout, I was talking about um, we're probably going to hit to 450 psychological level after uh, we broke the all-time highs in after hours right there. And to my surprise, it actually blew through 450. We had a little bit of resistance at 450, you can see right there at 450. You can see we were um, pretty much right there. We were um, rejecting a little bit here and consolidate a little bit just to wait for the next move because um, when you have a strong move up, you want to see a little bit of consolidation sideways before the next move up, just like a little bit here as well. And it's a very strong move. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of shorts that decided to short up here um, after this range, thinking that we might break through here and roll over and fill that gap for a big win. But it looks like um, we got squeezed out again. So why do we keep on playing on the bull side if Nvidia is super overvalued or super extended on the upside? It's because the chart is telling us to go on the bull side. Because when I zoom out into the four hours or even the daily, every time we make a new uh, make a low, the pivot is higher than the prior pivot. That means we go sideways here, bounce, draw up, go sideways here. This pivot low is still higher than the prior pivot low, meaning none of the structures have been um, damaged or anything. So sideways up, sideways up, continue to go up. If this keeps on going sideways up, and then we chop around here and go sideways. When we drop, we don't drop below this prior pivot, and then we go up again. It just continues. Um, you just want to continue to play it with this trend. Same here, same thing down here. Up, sideways. We didn't break the prior pivot. Up. Sideways here, up again. This pivot is above this pivot. This pivot low is above this pivot low. Every pivot low for NVIDIA has been above the prior pivot low. So there is no, um, what do you call it? Signals for us to swing NVIDIA short in the long term. Obviously, in the short term, you can play. Um, let's say after this move up, you're like, okay, I see a triple top here. Okay, I'm going to short. And then you hold it for a couple of days and you. Your profit here. That's a quick lead trade because um, big profit above the prior resistance, which is going to be acting as support. And I would say that's a very good trade. 
no signs of it holding for like you know uh, you're short for a long term time frame because every trend is going up versus let's say um, on 2000 last year right last year we're looking back here every trend is going down see all these pivots never broke above the prior pivot so every time this low makes a new low right that's when you hold your short for the long term because every low is making a new low but now every low is making a new or higher low against and when every trend is um against you right but uh so yeah continue to follow the trend i mean this could be the top but nobody nobody knows until it happens right you can say this was the top or this was the top but as long as the trend continues uh, we don't want to try to nail the top because our chances of it happening it's very low tesla so when I talked about um, Tesla on Monday, I, just, I was talking about that. This is weak selling because shares cannot fill the gap right there. It was like what? Uh, let's see, 264.45 and this was at 265.1. So we're 60 cents away. And the bears couldn't even fill that gap when we're 60 cents away. That means it's just weak selling. And I was expecting it to fill the gap and then test this 263 level, but nope. Holds play defense on the 12 EMA, which is the looking line. You can see all this bounces on 12 EMA, and we bounced. Now we're back above uh, 275. It was acting as prior resistance. Expected once yesterday. Now we're back above it. So that's a good sign for the bulls. Have lacking follow through from the bear. We need to start playing the other side. So as long as um, Tesla goes sideways um, in this higher range, it's good for the bulls for his next move after. Because you can definitely cut bulls some slack after such a significant move, right? Um, going sideways, it's perfectly fine for them, right? You come here, bounce up, drop around. Everyone's still happy. All bulls are still happy. Next thing you know, you may have another move up. Currently just taking a breather. Very, very normal for even bull markets that... Uh, we need some dips before the next move, just like here. Move up, big move up, taking a breather, chopping sideways. Boom, next move up. We can do the same thing. Going higher. Now, let's take a look and see if there's any strong resistance. Next resistance is just the um, 52 high. This 284 level for me. Um, this level's high. Two six three, hourly trend is your guide. Continue to trade your hourly uptrend. Okay. Apple, Apple's a little bit weaker, but after its significant move, you can cut them some slack as well. It's been going up since January, and um, two day EMA twelve, still holding above it. It will be significant if we actually form a two day downtrend, but uh, for now, no signs of that yet. We did bounce off the two day twelve EMA. Just has been bouncing off of it since. So as long as it holds above today, you may 12, um, we don't need to worry about um, selling on trade or anything like that. So we zoom into the daily, although daily is on a downtrend here. So if Apple can bounce above Friday's high, which is 192.67, then that's a daily downtrend now back to a neutral trend. And that'll just mean um from the bears. Probably test all time highs again if that happens. But as of now, it's Apple is a little bit weaker. You can see QQ was up one and a half percent today. Apple's only up half of like 0.42% today. Same thing as yesterday, it was a little bit weaker, but it's still holding, you know, holding at the top of its high range. So it's okay for the bulls. There's no need much to worry about at the moment. Apple can chop around here. Tighten up into his range. Next thing you know, um, a couple of weeks later, it decides to rotate, you know, money back from Google or something after Google run nothing more today, and then interest sector tech, tech rotation. When he flows back to Apple, Apple has his next move up, right? Every stock needs to go sideways or consolidate uh, for the next move up. Now, no red flags on Apple other than that daily downtrend. Um, 
can potentially shape up red flags if it starts to break that 12 EMA. All right, let's take a look at Amazon. So Amazon, yesterday I talked about how we were um, testing this 131 for the seventh time, but that this time is a lot stronger because, why is it this time a lot stronger? Because Amazon closed its price super close to 131. So that means the chances of us breaking above it or testing it again the next day is very high. See, every time we touch this place, it goes all the way down here, right? Same thing with this one. We closed all the way back down here. Same thing with this one. We closed down here. Same thing with this one. We closed all the way back down here and this one as well. And this one was the highest it closed when we tested that 131, meaning um, the bulls actually held its gains after rejecting from the resistance. So when we zoom into it, you can see we rejected here and closed right there, super near the resistance again. Bulls play defense. Back then, when every time we touched it, we rejected and we would close somewhere like down here. Right? So that was the indication for me that Amazon could potentially likely break out the next day um, or just retest it again. But we had a breakout free market and we move up and resist that breakout because we have been testing it seven times. When we break out, it's a very clear bull trade. Bulls would be buying that breakout as well as shorts would be covering their shorts um, when that happens. That's why we got such a significant move up straight to the next resistance zone. This is 140, about 134 zone, which coincides with the bottom of this structure. And it's probably a pretty smooth ride to 136 for me, because there's just not a lot of resistance, not a lot of volume in that this range until we hit this top of this. This is pretty much like the last boss when you go to play a game, and this is your absolute last boss at the highest difficulty because this is like a three-year drop zone, and there will be lots of people trapped in this um, zone for sure. So when the price comes back up here, a ton of people is going to be wanting to sell um, to break even or just get rid of their Amazon stock and something else, but that we're not there yet. But when it gets there, we will um, start to do more analysis on this structure over here. But as of now, it's looking good for the bulls after a breakout. This is the sideways zone, breakout, sideways zone, breakout, potentially shape up another sideways zone, breakout. Like I've been telling you guys, um, as long as it's Heart doesn't break down, it's gonna continue to go up. See this pivot low? Higher than the, it's higher than this one. This one is higher than this one. This one is higher than this one. It's all the stock that are trending. Google. Google back to team bowl after its weakness. There is a bit of a falling channel here. And it broke out today. About um, this candle right here, it's a red flag for me for bears. Is this bear break should have broken and filled this gap right down here after it broke here because there was just not a lot of volume here. There's just a straight shot up here. And it was also a trunk over here at 116. It would bounce off there once and this bounce off twice. Had a break there on Tuesday, and we shot straight back up, and gapped up the next day. As a red flag for me for the bears, uh, meaning they're just bear break, lack follow through. So when we have um, a break on one side that's lacking follow through, the most likely scenario it's going to be heading to the other direction. So that's essentially what happened, and we broke out of that channel as well, and had a. Uh, most bullish day for Google in a long time. So the most likely scenario for me is it's probably going to test this 125 again, and we'll see if or not. I would say it will probably, the first time it tests, probably won't get over it. And then we consolidate because this is a huge, big enough move where the next dip, bulls are going to be buying that dip up and likely head up higher like that. 
obviously we need QQ to continue uh, for this to also continue as well. But that's probably the most likely scenario. Maybe you bounce down here to this um, level right there. Drop, bounce, daily uptrend confirmed. So right now it's in a daily downtrend into a neutral trend because we broke about this. Google is back to a neutral trend. So if this happens, you know, we have a dip and then breaks above the prior high. Google will be back to the uptrend. So it's sign for Google at the moment. And it closed a close high of the day. Very likely will be a continuation tomorrow. All right, let's take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft also closing at its high of the day. So although we didn't get over, we technically did get over it, but it's, uh, let's see. Let's zoom in to see if we, was a lack of follow through or not. Okay, so we zoomed in here now and we see that it was the end of the day candle. So we can't say it's not lacking follow through. We can only say it's ran out of time. It was somewhere like in the morning or the middle of the afternoon and that we broke out and we came all the way down here. Then that would be a full break lacking follow through. That was just in May. Just got up to it in the last 15 minutes, we a little bit lower. We just have to say it's um, Microsoft ran out of time to really break out or re or test that level. And as long as it holds above um, this prior reason zone, one, three, four, two, and three, four, one. So we come, let's say we come down here a little bit and then bounce off it, perfectly fine. And it looks like the hourly EMA 12 is also bouncing this tail looking line. Good line for now. No signs of weakness yet. So if we do break above, we're probably coming up to this 345 again and 350 level again to retest this two level. If we have a clear breakout tomorrow here. Ref likes for bulls either. Looks like, um, yeah, still in the, this chop zone, but definitely favoring the bulls at the moment. Means is gonna dictate uh, tomorrow. All right, this is my FXI entry, but let's take a look at the last one, Meta. So Meta on the go to the daily. Another bullish day, and um, no signs of stopping at the moment. Although it's um, slower than yesterday. When yesterday, when Micro uh, Meta closed at top of its day, the most likely scenario is. A continuation because what does closing at the top of the day means? Closing at the high of the day just means it ran out of time to continue to go up, right? Let's say it closed at the high of its day at the end of the day. That just means um, Meta could have wanted to go higher, uh, but there's just no more time left to trade. So the most likely scenario for the next day is to head higher. So that's essentially what happened. But um, obviously today we didn't close at the high of the day, so can't say that for tomorrow. So most likely scenario, we're probably going to consolidate a little bit or go sideways, just like what we did back here. You know, consolidation. This is what a consolidation looks like. This is what also a consolidation looks like. as this one. We'll see if Meta consolidates before its next move up. Zoom out to see if there's any significant resistance. Yep, just like QQQ and most of some of its peers. Of his tech stock peers is testing the top of its structure, which is coincides exactly right there. So this would be the resistance zone that I'll be looking at for Meta. This um, three one three and this three one seven zone is going to be acting as resistance on Meta. So probably we would want to consolidate a little bit, fill up a little bit before its um, next attempt to see if we can break out of this own meta. And obviously its earnings is coming up as well. Big techs are also coming up um, a couple of weeks. So that would dictate where all these big tech stocks wants to go. And on my position on Yin, leverage ETF. I added last Friday, so if you guys want to check that video out, it's on. Um, it's called the $500 a day trading leverage 3x ETF 
I made that on Sunday. I'll put the uh, the link in the end of the video where you can, the card will pop up, as well as put the link in the bottom of the comments. So you can see I'm up quite a bit already, roughly in a 20s percent range. And yeah, still in the position. I scaled out a little bit because I have a large position. So I scaled out a little bit somewhere up here. And I'll probably scale a little bit more if we start to hit the 44s. And then I'll just let the rest ride and put my stop loss. So let's say we come up here to 44. I scale out even more. And I'll likely to see where that daily consolidation is going to be. Let's say we drop and then we form that pivot right there. I'm going to move my stop loss from where I entered up to that pivot and just let it ride. And if I'm wrong, let's say we just come back down and I get stopped out, I still made profit on this scale out and this scale out as well as um, if I get stopped by here, it's, I'm still in a profit because I've gotten here. So overall, I'll be in a decent profit at once. And whatever happens, I'm still being decent profit. I usually um, want to lower our risk and increase our rewards, especially when um, up significantly. Let's say we drop right from that pivot. I put my stop loss up here. Another pivot, guess what? I'm going to move my stop loss up there. And we just continue. I just keep on moving up, moving up. I would follow the trend. As of now, we need to break this 44 for us to form a weekly uptrend. So that's going to be um, very, very key for Yin and obviously Baba as well. Baba already formed his weekly uptrend. And we'll see what happens. All right, that's all I got for you guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you just subscribe, you guys made, if you guys learned anything or made it this far. And I will see you guys tomorrow for more market updates. Have a great rest of you guys' day.